Hey everyone, Pete Byrne, WSBT 22 Sports, along with Eric Hansen, co-publisher of Inside ND Sports. We've got peak fall colors here on campus, Eric, and I think we just saw peak Notre Dame football the last time they played against USC. I want to take you back to Saturday night a little more than a week ago where the Irish not only beat a top 10 team, but, but really kind of manhandled what we thought was the front runner for the Heisman Trophy. Defensively, how did they do that? And what can Notre Dame take from that win over USC that they can use moving forward these final four games? Well, I think they finally found the right combinations of personnel to get the most out of their defense. You know, they've been playing with different pieces and how much to play this guy and how much to play this guy. All of a sudden, the pressure that had resulted in hurries turned into pressure that turned into sacks and turnovers. And I think they've really hit on something. I think obviously you're going to have to change your pressures, change your game plan. But I think they found a ro playing rotation that really works for them. And when you think about that rotation, obviously the more guys that can play and have success, it keeps you fresh, it, it builds on things. You know, one guy that stood out to me and probably stood out to the whole country was Xavier Watts. I mean, you can't, you can't just predict that level of turnovers, but what are some of the things he's doing that, that we're starting to see now that's making him look more and more like a guy that's going to play on Sundays maybe? Yeah, so former wide receiver that got moved to safety and then was kind of, uh, did I make the right move? And then became a really sure tackler. Now all of a sudden we're seeing coverage. We're seeing a guy that understands how to read what the quarterback is doing, what the plays are, and so forth. I mean, he's really done a deep dive. He was asked about it after the game Saturday, and he's pretty humble. But, but he has really become the cover guy that they thought he could be, in addition to that great guy that helps you in the run game. Now, on the other side of the football, I think offensively we saw a, a, a couple surprises partly against USC. A, they got back to what they were good at, which is Audrey Gestime. Uh, but after having a phenomenal first four games, the three games that followed left a lot of people scratching their heads. They figured some things out against USC, but where does that progress from here? Well, I think Marcus Freeman brought it up today, and that's play action passes and taking some shots down the field. You know, we've talked about, thought about, wind about Tobias Merriweather's role in this offense. And really what he does great is getting down the field, beating people down the field, and then at six foot four, going up and getting contested catches. And that's something that they're gonna have to look at. And that's really what's going to pull teams out of leading into the run against Notre Dame. You know, Duke was the first to do it when they had three wide receivers. A little, little goes, that's pretty good, let's do that. USC did it to some extent and Notre Dame had a lot of short fields. They only had 251 yards total offense, so they didn't blow it out offensively. They were efficient, but, but they're going to have to blow it out offensively against Pitt, and this is their chance, a team that really stops the run well, that uh, brings a lot of pressures, gets a lot of sacks, but gives up a lot in the passing game. This is the perfect game plan to test somebody down the field. So given what you just said, all year long Notre Dame has been give the ball to Estime, run to open up the pass game. Is this a week where maybe you pass to open up the run? Exactly. And really I think that's the way the offense was supposed to work coming out of training camp. For teams that leaned one way, you would open up the passing game with the run, you'd open up the running game with the pass. We've only really seen open up the passing game with the run sometimes and then sometimes neither works so this will be the evolution Notre Dame needs for its last four games. As we look at these last four I'm going to ask you a quick big picture question before we let you go. Obviously with two losses ranked in the top 15 on paper most of the difficult part of the schedule behind them with the exception right. of Clemson uh, where does where does the ceiling now look for this program this year? Well they're trying to get to a New Year's Six Bowl and I think they need to get into the top 10 for that mm -hmm. to guarantee to be happening. And I think they can get there. They also have to look good against these four teams, not just win, because the teams that may jump them or the teams that may drop behind them, you know, are gonna be playing each other. And so, for example, we saw Utah jump them this week after beating USC yeah. by a couple of points. Uh, so that's gonna happen with that competition. They have to look good show that they're an improving team to get up to the top 10. All right, Notre Dame takes on Pittsburgh this afternoon, Saturday right here at Notre Dame Stadium. We'll be back next Monday with Eric Hansen of Inside ND Sports to let you know how it looks. I'm Pete Byrne from WSBT 22 News. For more Notre Dame stories, like and subscribe to the WSBT 22 YouTube page. Thanks for watching.